robot has powered to Earth to learn all about our animals. Let's join Zeke on his adventure. Today, he has a fascination for our feathered friends. That's right, we're flying through the facts on birds. Come on, it's time to take off. So hold on tight as we venture into Zeke's animal world. Hi Zeke, are you ready for another animal adventure? Today we're finding out about feathered friends and our first appointment is with the stork. Storks stand graceful and tall or march deliberately on their slender legs. They can also bend their long neck into some amazing positions. Storks are also beautiful in flight. They fly mostly by soaring on warm air currents with long, broad wings that only flap occasionally. Most of the time, the storks are gliding. This helps them conserve energy so they don't get too tired. They stretch their necks out and dangle their legs behind them as they fly, making them easy to spot even from far away. Most storks build their nests in trees. For many species, a new nest needs to be made each year, but some go back and use the same nest several years in a row. Stork nests can be huge, almost three meters deep and two meters wide in some cases. That's as big as two bathtubs. Zeke, storks can be found on all of Earth's continents, except icy cold Antarctica, but they're most commonly found in warm tropical places. Storks like to live in wetlands, grasslands, tropical forests and savannas. Storks certainly have long necks, Zeke. A long neck allows them to stretch out to capture their prey. At about three weeks old, the stork chicks start to stand up in the nest and flap their stubby wings. Chicks can eat up to 60% of their own body weight per day. If you weigh 36 kilograms, that would be like eating 22 kilograms of food every day. Uh -uh. The stork's nests are mostly made of sticks, which the male finds and brings back and the female puts in place. Take a look at the stork's long legs, Zeke. They allow the bird to take long strides and wade into deep water or tall grasses and reeds in search of food. That's why the stork is called a wading bird. He likes to walk through the water rather than swim in it. Since most storks live in wetlands or near water, they usually eat fish, amphibians, small reptiles, shellfish and insects although some also catch small mammals like rodents and moles. Zeke, some storks dig up patches of turf and place them inside the nest for a soft bed. Often the male will bring a leafy green twig as the finishing touch after all the construction is over. It's the stork version of home decorating. The storks aren't the only ones using the nests. Small birds like sparrows, starlings and wrens make their own nests in spaces between the sticks. It's like a bird hotel. When stork chicks hatch, they are almost naked, but they quickly develop a covering of fluffy down feathers. They need their parents to care for them, so both parents are very busy flying back and forth to bring them food. After a few months, their flight feathers start to grow in and they learn to fly. So what else have we found out about storks, Zeke? We know storks are wading birds and they like gliding through the air to conserve energy. Storks build very big nests and they have long necks so they can stretch out and catch their food. You've done very well, Zeke, and so have you. Come on, we've more birds to catch up with. Cranes are another tall breed of bird with long legs, necks and usually long bills. Cranes are generally brown, grey or white in colour. 
During migration, cranes fly with their head and neck straight out and their feet and legs straight behind them. They're able to reach heights of almost 8,000 meters. That's as high as an aeroplane. Cranes live in groups called flocks. Within the flock, male and female cranes form pairs. They remain in these twosomes for life. Cranes eat a variety of plants and small animals, Zeke. They like to build their nests in marshy areas or low trees. Okay, let's look at what we've learnt about cranes. Cranes fly with their long necks stretched right out. They're a tall bird with long legs and they live in groups called flocks. Another report complete. Well done. The crane certainly is an interesting feathered friend. This feathered friend is one of the most colorful of the bird world. These are flamingos. Can you guess what their favorite color is? That's right, it's pink. There are several species of flamingos and each one comes in a different shade of pinkish orange. Yes, Zeke, even the boys. Flamingos live in large groups, Zeke. A large group of birds is called a flock. Some flocks of flamingos have been known to contain one million birds. With everyone wearing pink, it would be very hard to find your family. Flamingos are not born with their beautiful pink plumage. The flamingo chick has white down feathers. It also has a straight pink bill and swollen pink legs, both of which turn black within a week. Looks like this little guy is a bit wobbly, but he'll grow into a graceful adult. After hatching, the chick stays in the nest for five to 12 days. During this time, the chick is fed a type of milk called crop milk that comes from the parent's upper digestive tract. It doesn't sound very nice to us, but the chicks love it. And both the mum and the dad flamingo can feed the babies in this way. A flamingo nest is not fancy, just a mound of mud, maybe 30 centimeters high. The nest needs to be high enough to protect the egg from flooding and the heat at ground level. This chick is very hungry, Zeke. Lucky mum and dad are close by, ready with a snack. Flamingo chicks are so cute. I love those little pink legs, don't you? Long legs let flamingos wade into deeper water than most other birds to look for food. And speaking of food, the flamingo has a very distinctive eating habit. The beak is held upside down in the water. The flamingo feeds by sucking water and mud in at the front of its bill and then pumping it out again at the sides. Tiny filters in the beak trap shrimp, small shellfish and water creatures for the flamingo to eat. The flamingo's pink or reddish color comes from rich sources of pigments in the food they eat, including algae and small aquatic insects and crustaceans. The Caribbean flamingos are the brightest, showing their true colors of red, pink or orange on their legs, bills and faces. Flamingos lay a single large egg, which is incubated by both parents. That means both the mum and the dad sit on the nest. Flamingos are very social animals, Zeke. This looks like a flamingo traffic jam. You'll often see a flamingo standing on one leg. Standing on one leg really is their most comfortable resting position. Let's see how long you can stand on one leg. The flamingo's strongly hooked beak helps them to scoop up all those shellfish from the muddy bottom of shallow water. Both the males and females build the nest by drawing mud toward their feet with their beaks. These are very clever feathered friends, Zeke. 
Once the young birds leave the nest, they herd together in large groups called crèches and can run and swim well at an early age. Flamingo eggs are very big, aren't they? The mum and dad flamingos take turns in sitting on the nest for up to 31 days, waiting for their little chick to hatch. Could you sit on an egg for 31 days, Zeke? No, I didn't think so. So what have we discovered about the fabulous flamingo? We know that flamingos have long legs and their feathers are a beautiful shade of pink. Flamingos like to eat small shellfish and their hooked beak helps them to scoop up food from underwater. Fantastic work, Zeke. You should be tickled pink. Our next feathered friend is part of nature's cleanup crew. Zeke, these birds are called condors and they belong to the vulture family. Like all vultures, condors are scavengers and feed on carrion. Do you know what carrion is, Zeke? Carrion is the remains of a dead animal. Condors prefer large dead animals like deer, cattle and sheep, but they also eat rodents, rabbits and even fish. Even though it sounds pretty yucky, it's great that condors clean up. They're an important part of the animal world and without them, things could get pretty messy. Because they eat scraps, some people think of condors as dirty, but they're actually pretty tiny, Zeke. After eating, they clean their heads and necks by rubbing them on grass, rocks or branches. Condors also bathe frequently and spend hours smoothing and drying their feathers. Condors don't have vocal cords, so they only make hissing and grunting noises. They don't have a good sense of smell, so they find their food mostly by their keen eyesight. Crevices and caves in rocky cliffs make for great condor nest sites. The adult female will lay a single whitish or pale green-blue egg between January and March. When they fly, condors are a wonderful sight to see. That's when their impressive wings are shown in all their glory and when you can see the triangular patch of white flashing under each wing. The condors catch thermal air currents that rise up as the sun heats the ground. And with those huge wings, they can stay in the air for hours, soaring through the skies as they scan the fields below for their next decaying meal. Zeke, these large birds gorge themselves on one and a half kilograms of food at a time and then they can go without food for several days until they find another carcass. They may not be the prettiest birds you've ever seen, but the condor's head is designed to keep rotting food from sticking to them as they eat. The skin on the bare heads of adults can also express some emotions. It turns a deep red pink during courtship or when the birds are excited or alarmed. The adults also have a throat sac that they can puff out during courtship displays when they're hoping to find a girlfriend. Condors are one of the largest flying birds. They have shiny black plumage. Plumage is another word for the bird's feathers. Condors have very big wings. Their wingspan can reach three meters wide. When the condor chick hatches out of the egg, it will have bare patches on its head, neck, belly and underwing. Let's go back over what we've learnt about condors, Zeke. Condors are scavengers and eat the carcasses of dead animals. A condor's wingspan is very large, almost three metres. Their feathers are black and the skin on their head changes colour depending on their mood. You're a champion and so are you, Zeke.
This time, we'll meet some birds of prey. Do you know what a bird of prey is, Zeke? A bird of prey, like this owl, is a bird that hunts smaller birds, as well as small mammals and rodents, like mice and rats. Birds of prey, like hawks, are carnivores. They are predatory birds that catch, kill and eat a wide variety of other animals in order to survive. Hawks are strong, powerful birds. Their feet are equipped with sharp, curved talons or claws for capturing prey, and their strong beaks are hooked. Owls have the best hearing of all birds. Their ears are located on the sides of their heads and are hidden by feathers. The hawk's sense of hearing is excellent too, and their eyesight is the best in the entire animal world. Birds of prey are carnivores. That means that they eat meat. They have hooked beaks, sharp claws, and fantastic eyesight. Good work, Zeke. That was a real hoot. Our next feathered friend is the largest and heaviest living bird. Zeke's not sure what this bird's name is. Can you help him? You're right, this is the ostrich. It's a flightless bird that can never take to the skies, so instead, it's built for running. The ostrich's long, thick and powerful legs can cover great distances. Just one of an ostrich's strides can be up to five meters long. That's longer than many rooms. Ostriches mostly eat plants, especially roots, leaves and seeds. But they also munch on insects like locusts and small animals like lizards. Oh look Zeke, this giraffe has something in common with the ostrich. Do you know what it is? Yes, they both have lovely long necks. Ostriches like to live in groups, which helps with defense. With their long necks and keen vision, they can see long distances. So in a group, at least one of them is likely to see danger coming. Mummy and Daddy ostriches share the task of incubating the eggs. That means they take turns in sitting on them to keep the eggs warm. They share caring for the chicks too. Oh, aren't these chicks adorable, Zeke? Just think, these fluffy little bundles will grow to be big, powerful, and very fast. Ostriches lay very big eggs. In fact, one ostrich egg is equivalent to the weight of about 24 chicken eggs. Imagine frying that up for breakfast. Did you know that an ostrich's eye is almost five centimeters wide? That's the largest eye of any land animal. Okay, what have we discovered about the wonderful ostrich, Zeke? They are flightless, but have powerful legs. Ostriches are the largest living birds and they lay very big eggs. Good work, team. Come on, Zeke, let's follow those feathers. Zeke, our last feathered friend, is one that starts out life a little on the ugly side, but grows into one of the most graceful and beautiful birds. This is the swan. These wonderful water birds can be found in areas around lakes and rivers. Zeke, male swans are called cobs, females are pens, and their young are cygnets. You'll often find swans at the park. Maybe you fed the swans some bread. Swans have a very large wingspan. When they tuck their wings into their back, they form a lovely shape, which flows into that long arched neck. Swans spend plenty of time preening and cleaning their white feathers. 
These are mute swans. They have a triangle of black in front of the eyes and a deep orange colored bill. Oh look Zeke, this one is diving for something to eat. There are different types of swans. Some have black feathers. Swans can make some loud noises, Zeke. They snort when they're annoyed, make a shrill trumpeting when they're really angry, and also an aggressive hiss. You should never go too close to swan Zeke, even at the park. Just throw your bread and admire these beautiful birds from a safe distance. The average lifespan of a wild swan is 18 years. Swans living in captivity average 30 to 40 years, with one on record having lived 70 years. That's what I call a senior citizen swan, Zeke. Swans are able to float on the water because of air held in their feathers. The swan's body feathers or plumage is continually covered by oil from the preen gland. They are very careful not to get water under their plumage. Zeke, a swan can have over 25,000 feathers. That's a lot of preening. Swans have the longest neck of any bird with 23 to 25 neck vertebrae. Swans are wonderful swimmers. Their large webbed feet propel them through the water. Swans can go underwater from 10 to 20 seconds at a time, Zeke. Because of the length of their long, sinewy necks, the birds can dip their heads by curving their necks into the water and lay their chins flat on the bottom, continuously swallowing. Swans usually mate for life, remaining together through the year. They lay from five to 10 eggs that take about 42 days to hatch. The female does most of the egg incubation, but every now and then the male will replace her for a while so she can have a swim and a bite to eat in the lake. Careful Zeke, remember the swan's wings are very powerful. We also learnt that swans have a deep orange coloured bill. A male swan is called a cob, a female is called a pen, and a baby swan is called a cygnet. Zeke has learnt a lot about our feathered friends, and I hope you did too. See you next time.